3D printing a replacement part. We're not using plans, we're gonna wing it. Hey there folks and welcome back to DIY IT's discovery series on 3D printing here on ZDNet. My name is David Gewertz and today we're gonna do something useful. Here's the challenge, okay? I have this fan. I really love this fan. It is a favorite of mine. It sits at the far side of my desk and I use this remote control to turn it on and turn it off. And it's important to be able to get to it from the remote control because sometimes I need to be on the phone suddenly and I don't have time to go run over there and, well, frankly, I'm lazy. So I love me my remote control. Now the problem is a couple weeks ago, I lost the back cover of the remote control. I'll give you a zoom in on this in a sec. But I lost the back cover of the remote control. Basically, I dropped the remote control and the cover, this piece, is somewhere under my desk. This is the 3D printed replacement part. And I whined about it for quite some time and realized that I really wanted the cover back. Well, it turns out I have, you know, some 3D printers. Perhaps it might be an idea to make my own cover. So that's what I did. Um, I started off with a little, hold that thought, I'll be right back. I'm back. Say hello to my little friend. These are calipers. These things are wonderful. This little thing basically slides up and down and it gives you a measurement. And the interesting thing is if you measure, let's grab this for a moment, if you measure Inside, you can slide it up and down and get an exact digital measurement. But if you're measuring between two points, like here, you can slide it up and down and get a measurement there. This is not an expensive device. This is pretty much an essential if you're gonna do 3D printing, and I think this was 10 bucks maybe at Harbor Freight. So it's a, a valuable thing. Anyway, so the key question was, how do I fit a cover on here? So the first thing I did is I started with a circle and a rectangle, which is what this piece is. It's a circle and a rectangle. And I just tried to make it fit. And once I made it fit, I then built all the various pieces off of that. And I'll show you that in a minute. It turns out, now we're not talking about something big here. We're using something, you know, roughly the size of a penny. It's not a particularly big object. And I decided to do an experiment with it, which is I decided I was going to print it on this printer, the, uh, the Mod T, which is a $400 printer. And I decided I wanted to do that for a couple reasons. I wanted to see, could you use a consumer priced low end printer to do something specifically useful like uh, printing a replacement part? The other thing is, is that because the finished piece is relatively small, it doesn't take too long. This is not nearly as fast as the Lulzbot or the MakerBot. Um, but it works, and so I was able to print this piece out. Now, the way I did it was iteratively. I just took, you know, I tried a piece and tested it and see if it fit, and I did that a while. Did quite a few of them. What I'll show you is that the changes to do these, the individual changes it takes to do these things are maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes in front of the computer. And then I queued it up and sent it to the printer and came back to it. So this took a couple of weeks because I spent five minutes and then forgot about it for an hour or two or a day or two. And then came back and did another one and then did another one and did another one. It's not hard. I mean, the material for this is maybe all told, you know, you're not looking at more than 50 cents worth of material. Let's take the battery, drop it in the remote, take my final piece, drop it in here. It fits, it pushes in. It fits, it puts it pushes in, there we go. Turns on, rotate, stop, change direction. Change fan amount. And there we go, it works. It's not a precise fit, but it's good enough. And it does what I want and doesn't actually look like it doesn't belong. And we're talking, you know, a relatively inexpensive printer. Yes, I probably could have contacted the manufacturer and bought a separate remote or 
bought a separate tab. I don't know if they would do that or not, honestly, but that, that's an option. I chose not to do that because I have a 3D printer and why not? Let's do it. So there you are. If you need a replacement part, it's not that hard to do. Just go make it and I will forever be your fan. Hit the subscribe button that's down in this corner. Visit ZDNet and DIYIT and keep watching more of these videos. There's an entire library of how to do 3D printing that you're also welcome to check out. And we'll see you next time. For ZDNet and my fan, I'm David Gortz.